Hittagong, named for Bangladesh's second largest city, is the 1930 colonial era story of how a group of youth launched the first successful military action against the British occupation of India. The little-known series of events known as the Great Chittagong Uprising of 1930 has now been dramatized on screen, depicting the lives of the young revolutionaries, including the teenager and youngest member of the group 14-year-old Subodh Junku Roy and his teacher and mentor Masterda Surya Sen, who led the uprising. First-time director Beda Brata Pine, who also produced and co-wrote the film, hopes to increase awareness of the historical anti-colonial uprising, which came within two decades of the 1947 British withdrawal of India. Dr. Pine is a highly decorated, award-winning scientist and one of the inventors of a digital imaging technology that enables the kind of cameras used in everything from space telescopes to cell phones. His film Chittagong premieres this Tuesday the opening night gala of the 10th annual Indian Film Festival of Los Angeles. Angeles at the Arclight Theatre in Hollywood. Beda Bratana joins me on the phone and uh, joins me in studio. <laughs> Welcome to Uprising. Good morning. Good morning, good morning and thanks so much for joining us. And oh. I should also mention he is also a good friend of mine that I've known for many years. Um, well, first of all, congratulations on this film. Oh. I know it was many, many years in the making. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm, it's a great, great, great honor to be here in, in at KPFK and that too with Sonali. <laughs> well, let's talk about the film itself. Um, as I mentioned, this was uh, the first uh, major uh, sort of armed uprising that the British faced in their uh, occupation of what was then India and mm-hmm. what is today Bangladesh. Why is this an incident that you chose to dramatize in film? Um, actually, talking about India's um, freedom struggle against the British, uh, there are, I think, many, many, many untold stories uh, and this just happens to be one of them. Uh, and I'll, I'll come to it, how I came, came to this story, came upon this story. But uh, for me, the uh, big thing was that um, very often we forget that it's the freedom struggle wasn't won just by the leaders. It was won by the efforts of a large number of ordinary people. So I wanted to actually tell the story of these ordinary people because these kids were not trained politicians or military or army. They were just ordinary boys. And just to show that even these boys could bring an empire down. And it wasn't just boys. And girls. There were girls involved. Uh, And and these are characters that uh, that lived. um, Surya Sen, the the teacher and and mentor, uh, this young boy, Subodh Roy or Junku Roy, how did you uh, how did you dramatize their lives and their characters on screen? What sort of research did you have to do to to find out the things that motivated them, the details of their life? How much is fiction? How much is nonfiction? (laughs) (laughs) It's always that's always a very difficult balance to 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 keep because at the end of the day, it's not a documentary. It's, it's a story. So it has to have a story. And that's one of the reasons why we chose um, Junku, uh, this 14-year-old boy, to be the protagonist. Um, because, you know, I mean, if you look at Master Da, uh, as inspiring a character as he is, and he is uh, he's an iconic figure in Bengal. Uh, I mean, and, 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 and it's very sad that just outside Bengal, nobody knows about Master Da. Mm-hmm. Um, that his character is something that is, is very steady. I mean, he knows what he wants to do, and that doesn't make for great drama. So we chose Junku because Junku's character, not only he is the youngest uh, participant, which already makes for something very exciting, um, he's young, and that raises lots of controversial questions, and I wanted to tackle those. Um, but more importantly, he was, he's one of the most unlikely participants in this, in this uprising. His father was, his father was, was one of the uh, high ups in, in the British administration. So he had access to, to, the, to the British houses. He was a very good student, never would play football, let alone pick up a gun. He was destined for he was Oxford. He playing piano. He was playing piano. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, how does that kind of a boy make his transition from being uh, this, this uh, you know, uh, goody to she kind of a boy to, to a revolutionary? And throughout the whole thing, battled his self-doubt because he always wanted to be the revolutionary, but he didn't think he could make it. And the whole story is about him conquering his self-doubt despite himself. 
till the last moment he's not sure if if this is what he's cut out for hmm. and he fi- finds out and he witnesses the injustices of the british regime firsthand uh, s- which sort of helps motivate him to join this group of ragtag uh, of, you know youth um who were planning to challenge the british uh, so so let's talk about the the fact that um the the this young boy who came from this privileged background became the youngest member of this group who was eventually he was arrested he was he was arrested for his militancy against the occupation how is he remembered today and and uh, you know it's just amazing for us to think of somebody who's 14 years old it is um to to some extent it is actually a sad reflection of india's history that indian official history has not uh talked about revolutionaries in a big way i mean till the other day nobody knew about bhagat singh who was also exactly from the same era in fact uh, my film begins with with an upri- uh, with with a demonstration that was taking place around bhagat singh and there's another guy called jatin das so i think indian history needs to be reevaluated about the role that revolutionaries played and let me also make one point which is where these movement was so different because there was there was this form of revolutionary terrorism where they would go and assassinate a british you know of officer and and you know sometimes you have justifications i mean you know mm-hmm. these these guys have seen their 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 fa- fathers or their mothers or their sisters being killed right in front of their eyes uh but um Uh, what master dot the sujus and wanted to do or what this uprising was about was actually coming together and militarily defeat british right and that's a very very different uh, scenario and and in fact let's talk about that this was an armed uprising unlike the broad independence struggle led by gandhi that most of the world particularly the western world knows about that that professed non-violence mm-hmm. uh, is this a sort of um, deliberately you think shadowy part or or untold part of the indian struggle for independence actually what bothers me even more than uh, the the characterization that's usually done versus armed versus unarmed and so on mm-hmm. is that aside from from gandhi's struggle there was a large number of people's movements such as peasant movements mm-hmm. uh that actually goes completely unrecognized and in fact my film goes to that mm-hmm. So it's a very interesting transition that happens within the film just as my my protagonist makes a transition the film also makes a transition because in the end of the end at the end a struggle you you take the form of the struggle you take is depends upon what your objectives are sometimes it is a military sometimes it is it's bringing you know millions of people out in the in the street and uh, uh, you know if you get to see this film uh, i have tried to bring that that flavor in um it it's it's a intensely political story it's a it's a um it's a very human story which comes back to the question that you had asked that how did i make keep that balance right. so in many ways i had to keep put myself in the in the footsteps or or in the skin of these characters that what must this boy have gone through and that that made the story so there is actually a character that is introduced which is not really historical uh, sort of a girl he had a thing for or the girl had a thing for him mm-hmm. um it's it's a very it's it's a subplot um but that character is 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 brought in purely for the dramatic if, mm-hmm. uh, uh, reasons as well as um for instance there's other things that i have done there's you talked about the girl there was there's actually a, it's one of the few movements for the first time brought in girls out in the open mm-hmm. in fact one of the girls priti lata wadadar who's the reason actually i finally came to this story uh because i thought this was an amazing feat that a 21 year old girl could uh you know basically made wanted to make a in point in 1930 in 1930 make a point that where there was this european club where indians were not allowed there was this usual sign indians and dogs not allowed right so she wanted to make a point that she would take over the club and and establish indian presence there because it's after all our soil right and such a heroic character nobody knows about her and she existed i mean she she's true, a historical yeah, she's character very very, right? very 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 much true in fact one of the things i did again was when i started doing research one of the things about about this kind of movements is that apart from the armed struggle there is also a human element right. you fall in love with somebody else you know one should not ignore those those those, those right. things 
My guest is Beda Bratta Pine, writer, producer, and director of the film Chittagong, which is premiering at the opening night gala of the Indian Film Festival of Los Angeles, now in its 10th year, tomorrow, April 10th, at 7.30 p.m. at the Arclight in Hollywood. Tickets are available at indianfilmfestival.org. There are a number of films being shown, 33 films in uh, all, documentaries and short films including. Now, let's talk about uh, the the fact that the the resistance was aimed at sort of reclaiming Chittagong uh, through the formation of the Indian Republican Army, as they called it. How big was this army? How broad was the movement led by this small group of young school kids that weren't even trained in, in, in military tactics? Uh, that raises two very important points. I mean, I, you, know, you have to realize when you have a, have a subjugated uh, people, uh, and when there is oppression from, from an outside conqueror, people are going to rise up. I mean, this we see that happening right in front of our right. eyes, whether we look in Palestine or we look in uh, Afghanistan, that, that always happens. So these kids were itching for action. And, and had it not, I mean, the brilliance of Master Dai is that he channelized their, their efforts in a direction that was so constructive. Otherwise, they probably would have, surely out of frust- frustration, gone and killed one, one British officer. Um, so that, that's, I think, one aspect of it, that there was a, a seeming, I mean, there's a, uh, there's, there's, a, there, there's a simmering movement, there's a simmering you know, discontent, there's a simmering uh, urge to act that was there amongst, amongst the youth at that time. Um, but, uh, but the other aspect, which, is, which I also want to touch upon here, is that for four years, uh, so they took over the, uh, Ch- the Chittagong, but they could not hold on to it. They, they actually defeated the British in a battle of Jalalabad still, but after that, the British came back, and these guys w- went uh, in, into the hiding. Now, for four years, <clears throat> excuse me, for four years, the British could not catch Surya Sen. Why? He was, I mean, he was, there were huge amounts of rewards, all sorts of enticements, and yet they could not catch him. Why? And it was a big, major embarrassment because he was hidden by the peasants. And you have to realize he was a Hindu, of Hindu religion. The peasants in that area were almost predominantly all Muslim. Right. And it's a Muslim peasants at great cost to their, their, you know, their well-being, their lives of, uh, sometimes, protected this man. Mm. Let's let's talk about the making of the film. How do you make a film that is so political, so palatable to mainstream audiences? Um, you know, one of the films that Western audiences may have seen that relate to the Indian independence movement, uh, but about a, a far less militant act of resistance is um, is Lagan, the film that was nominated for an Oscar. Lots of singing, dancing, and but it's, it's, it's at its heart still political. How did you, as somebody who is a political activist and writer, um, make a film? Or, or what challenges did you see to make a film like Chittagong also something that's broad-based? Because, of course, you want your film to be seen by as many people as possible. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> In these one are, minute or less. No. <laughs> these, are, these are all, all big questions. And I don't know if I have if I've, uh, failed in that or not, because uh, as, as much as I'm talking about the politics, I did not want my politics to come out, uh, you know, in, into the... In, in, or, or rather, overwhelm the story. So what I... Um, I, I decided right from from day one is that it has to be a human story it has to be something that you connect with this boy you have to connect with this this boy's journey his you know his intense desire to overcome his his self doubt you have to connect with this girl priti lata wadadar you have to connect with each and every character uh, so you know this the, the heart of it is is a story and it, it's that story so that, is, that. that is going to, ca- I think that is going to yeah. uh, carry the film through. And so, uh, Beda Brata Pain, I have to ask you also how uh, or why you left a very successful career in <laughs> science and technology. You know, your your bio is, is so full of the awards that you've won, um, highly regarded JPL scientist to pursue this very arduous and financially insecure path of an independent filmmaker. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes I'm asked this question, why did you get diverted into, uh, into filmmaking? And my answer is, perhaps JPL, NASA, was a diversion. Perhaps <laughs> this is what I wanted to do. This and, is what uh, you were meant to do, maybe. Perhaps, yeah. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I mean, growing up in Bengal, you don't have much of a chance, choice, at least the, the, the time that I grew up, which was a, a, a time of political and cultural uh, ferment. 
uh, we don't have much of a choice but being very involved culturally, politically, socially. Mm-hmm. And that has stayed with me. Um, let's, as we're discussing, um, since we are discussing an Indian film, let's not ta- forget to talk about the music from the film. Um, we'll go out with a song called Mashal Me Jagado. Um, tell us about this song and, and what it signifies. Um, well, no, that's actually, it's almost segue to the, the question that you mm-hmm. asked, that, that uh, what did I do? Well, you know, song, music is one of the aspects I use to make it more, more accessible to, 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 to people. Um, and the, the song that we had chosen, um, you know, there are four songs in, in, the, mm-hmm. in this film. But of course, these songs are not like your typical Bollywood song where, where the storytelling stops and the song happens. Right. And it's, it's very in, integrally uh, interwoven with the with the with the, with the story now um, I, I i'm not sure which which song you're playing mashal me mashal jagado, me jagado? Though, yeah uh, not not the ishan no mashal, okay, me, mashal jagado. me jagado so the mashal me jagado song is a song which is used with a montage where these guys these kids and the school teacher are preparing to take over the the armory or the five locations that they took over and what does the name of the song mean uh, it means it's it's actually a beautiful song it is actually that 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 deep desire of Junku. So Mashal Me Jagado means that give me a place or make a place for me in this uh, torch, you know, the, 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 the torch that, that mm-hmm. you carry as a... Um, and, uh, and, and, and it's a song that's kind of internal song of Junku saying that I need to have a place in that torch. This 14-year-old boy. This 14-year-old yeah. boy that I need to break away. So it, it's, it's a, one place it says Purza Purza Rakh Rakh Ho Mitne Wali Meri Sakh Ho which means that I need to destroy my old self and burn every fragments so that I can be born anew. Well, Beda Brata Pine, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck to you in this film. Thank you so much.